buddy, we are all set with checkpoint one, it looks like, um, and we are now heading on to checkpoint two. So checkpoint one's question was, why did the Industrial Revolution start in England? Why wasn't it starting somewhere else in the world, all right? Uh, and many of you answered that by putting down two new inventions uh, or some new natural resources, the important natural resources they found uh, in the country that they were able to use to start making factories and start um, building railroads and new cotton mills and all those new inventions and things like that. All right, so now we're going to be looking at what is the impact on the workers who were living at that time. So um, I know some of you have gone over this with the content assessment. We've covered this in class a little bit with some images and pictures we looked at. But now we're going to be uh, um, practicing some reading and doing that the same way. So checkpoint two, the uh, checkpoint right here states, we are going to be looking at impact on workers of the Industrial Revolution. And our supporting question is, how did the Industrial Revolution impact the lives of workers in England? So we want to be following, thinking about that supporting question every time we are reading, writing, anything for this checkpoint. Um, so we're going to look at the directions first. So the directions first say, use the information from your document set to uh, see things from the perspective of a worker during the Industrial Revolution. Imagine you are a worker who moved to the city for a job. You're going to write a letter home to your family in the country describing at least three impacts the, the Industrial Revolution has had on you. You do not need to cite your sources for this letter, but the information should come from the document set and you will be scored on synthesizing evidence. And if we think back, we remember um, from our first project, synthesizing evidence means we are putting evidence, we're putting information together, we're joining it together. So we're gonna be using several documents and the information from those several documents uh, to kind of come together to make one key point. This plus this plus this equals that all together. Um, so since our goal is to be writing a letter from the perspective of a person who was alive at that time, we want to be, you know, once we start writing, we'll look at write, using first person language, um, talking about these events like they're actually happening to you, so on and so forth. But first step is to say, use the information from your document set see things from the perspective of a worker during the Industrial Revolution. So what I want you to do is go to your resources and you're going to open up Checkpoint 2 Impact on Workers document set. And you're going to see a set of documents. Uh, there's about five in here. Um, and what you're going to be doing is reading each document. So the directions say, read through each source to gather information on what life was like for workers during the Industrial Revolution. At the end of each source is a chart for you to organize your information. Fill in at least one box with an impact that you found from the document. And this information will help you write the letter for checkpoint two. All right. So you should not be writing your letter until you read through the documents in this set and fill out the charts at the bottom. So just so we're aware right here, this is the chart I'm talking about you should fill out. We're looking for either physical impacts on workers, we're work looking for impacts on their living conditions, or the impact on child workers. There might be more than one in each um, section. There actually should be more than one in each document. Um, and we, But we need to fill in at least one of these boxes with information from our writing. So let's go through the first one together. We have source A. And as I'm always going to look through the origin of source, it's going to say this is an excerpt from the first report for uh, commissioners for inquiring into the employment and condition of children in mines and manufactories. So this is a document from the British government. They did an investigation to see um, what's going on with these kids who are working in mines and factories. All right. So the context here is that in the 1800s, British children as young as seven worked in the factories and mines. Eventually, the British Parliament would pass laws to limit child labor. The following ex excerpts come from testimonies given in 1842 as Parliament debated the problem of children working in the mines. And as we go on to our source document, remember we're looking for impacts on uh, people's physical um, well-being, impacts on living conditions, or child workers. So let's think about those as we read here. So the source document says, I am 12 years of age. I went down to the pits about seven and a half to open the doors when the horses came. 
I was 12 hours a day and got six uh, pennies a day. When I was paid, I took it home to my mother. I once fell asleep and was well threshed by the driver. Threshed meaning whipped. About a year and a half ago, I took to the girdle and chair, which was like a kind of like a carriage, but for instead of for horses, for people to pull. I do not like it. It hurts me. It rubs off my skin. I often feel pain. I get 15 pennies a day now. I cannot read. I had not time to eat a bit of meat from morning till night. I often have bad blist blisters on my side. I crawled on my hands and my feet. I often knocked my back against the top of the pit, and it hurt very much. When I came home at night, I often sat down to rest. I was so tired, the work made me look much older than I am. So there we have several things going on. This testimony from a 12-year-old child. Um, so right away, I saw a couple physical impacts in there that I was talking about. Um, when he's talking about, um, about a year and a half ago, I took to the girdle and chair. I do not like it. It hurts me. It rubs off my skin. I often feel pain. Okay. So there's something I can put down for physical impacts. Don't need to put down a quote. I can just summarize it. I can say, um, author speaks about his skin rubbing off and being in pain. I also saw a section here too where he crawls on his hands and his feet. Um, he hits his back on the top of the pit. Uh, the work makes him look much older than he is. So I'm going to add that in there too. He also says, uh, what was it? I forgot. Um, he crawls on his hands and his feet. Boy, can't type today. And uh, hits his back on the tunnel he looks older than he is so there we go we got several physical impacts going on there um, as we go back up I know there's some impact on child workers that I want to fill in too I know he said that we only need to have one box filled in but if there's more information um, we need to have uh, we need to organize it so we can remember because we might want to use it so he said he's 12, but he started working when he was seven and a half. So I'm going to put that in there. Uh, he started working when he was seven and a half. All right. So he should have been a first or second grader at this time. Um, he worked 12 hours a day. Uh, one time he was beat by the driver. The driver would be the boss. Okay. He was beat by the boss. Got that in there. Um, and, yeah, oh, oh, here's another good one in here. He can't read yet. So he's 12 years old, but he still can't read. So I'm going to put that in there. Um, since he's working, he is not able to go to school. So he cannot read. All right. So that is all we are going to be focusing on for this section. Um, so again, continue this process. We're going down to document B, C, D, E. Um, some of them focus on different things. So you are going to find stuff on uh, impact on living conditions. You're going to find some on physical impacts, so on and so forth. Make sure, of course, that you are looking at the word bank because these are words from the 1800s, you know, uh, we don't usually know what a charwoman is. I've never used that word in my regular life. So make sure you're looking up what those things are. So once you're done with that, we're going to be moving on to the next step here. So if we think back to the directions, we just need this document set to gather our information. So now I'm going to go back to checkpoint two, and I'm going to start writing my letter. So if I was this person, I'm going to write it like an actual letter. Okay, so we're going to branch out of our paragraph writing a little bit here and kind of shift gears get into the mindset of someone who is living at this time so I'm gonna start it off by you know maybe you want to put a date in there 1842 I'm gonna do that just to, you know add some realism to it so I'm gonna say October 8th just a random date 1842 okay it's the date from the document we got in there 
I'm going to say, dear family, because again, we're in the city writing to our family back home in the country telling them what it's like. So, um, since I need three impacts, I'm not going to put all three in this letter, but you are going to need to have three from the document um, that are being referenced. Okay, so um, I'm going to look back at my document set. I'm going to think, um, well, I found impacts on physical problems, impacts on child workers. Um, I'm going to mo mo mostly focus on the physical impacts here. So we're talking about this person is crawling on his hands and feet in the tunnels and looking older than he is. So I'm going to try and work that into my letter. Remember, I'm synthesizing evidence. So I'm taking, pulling different parts of information from different places, putting them all together in one place. So I'm going to start saying, well, things aren't looking so hot here because, you know, I'm in pain all the time. I'm going to start off by saying, um, dear family, things are going very poorly here. Um, I have a job in the mines, but it is taking its toll. Um, so now this is the part where I'm going to start incorporating that evidence I found. So I'm going to start saying, um, you know, based on the experiences that I read about, I would say this person's probably being injured. So I'm going to say um, the tunnels are very small. And I usually have to crawl on my hands and feet. Um, people say I look much older than I really am. All right. So right here, all this information here, I have to crawl on my hands and feet. People say I look much older than I am. I took that directly from our source, right? So he's talking about I crawled on my hands and feet right there. Um, I look much older than I really am. So there he goes. There's two direct references that I'm taking from the document and putting them into my letter. So when I read your checkpoint, once it's finally done, um, you're gonna, it's going to look kind of similar to this. You're going to start talking to your family, um, and I want to see some direct references to the information that you found in your document set, okay? So it could be talking about, you could use some specific examples of living conditions that are in uh, document C. You could use some more, talk, uh, talk some more about the child workers that were living at the time, um, but make sure again... Um, as we said here, you don't need to cite your sources for this letter, but the information needs to come from the document set. Okay. Again, the whole point we're trying to see here is if you were alive at this time, what would life most likely be for you? And if you think that's kind of a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, don't forget office hours are on Tuesday at uh, noon to two. Uh, sign up if you need to, and I will send you the link for that. Um, otherwise, good luck on this. Please email me if you have a question um, and we can work through that together as well.